Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jesus uh, stood up uh, and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Really stood out to me is Isaiah 41, chapters 8 to 13. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its furthest corners, saying to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all who are incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be as nothing at all, for I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I am the one who helps you. I'm going to ask uh, Joe if he'd read from Psalm 46. And this is a reading from King James, the uh, authorised version. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. I'm going to read from Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel 47. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down to the Arabah, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will go stand along the shore from En Gedi to En Eglaim. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. 
and their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Um, it's good to see you. So um, just quickly, hi from the family, from Jen and the kids. All doing well, all busy, um, as always. Um, I wanted to hopefully just encourage us this morning um, because... I think probably over a year, 18 months, I've been exhausted. I'm just tired. But not like worn out from a busy day at work, but like a deep tiredness, like a weariness of my soul. A mate of mine sent me a verse in Daniel 7.25, and it says, it's kind of a picture of the enemy of our souls talking to God and wearing, wearing down, down the saints. saints. Ah, I've got some reverb. <laughs> wearing down the saints, so like this kind of deliberate opposition to exhaust you. And that's certainly what I've felt. Um, but the flip of that is, the flip side of that is, one of the things I've discovered is that there is a river of life that flows. It's flowing right now. There is a river of life that flows. The water is crystal clear. It's powerful. That river can be as calm Mirror, mirror sort of finish. You know that top where there's no wind, there's no, it's just still. It's still moving, but it's still on top. Or it can be a raging torrent and it's deep. It's deep. It can be a scary place to be near. That's the presence of God. He's alive and available to us. There's a resource available to us. And it's interesting when we're being still. I'm rarely still. And I don't know if others of you are, but life can be so busy. This, and Sarah and Dina, you guys must know, you've, you've got a lot going on. But the static of our day, the noise and the busyness of our day can really cloud out our contact and even our vision or even our belief that there is that river of life available. And I've found that even when I am resting, not necessarily still, but I'm on my phone, I'm looking at the next thing, I'm plugged in, I'm switched on, it's so rare that I'll disconnect and sit and be still. And what happens is when I try and be still, when I try and just rest, or I try and turn my gaze to God and say, oh, Lord, I want to experience this river, I want to experience this life, this presence of you, my mind is like, no, but what about, you got to go to Asda, you got to get that Christmas shop ready, you've got, you got to think about food and you've got to get the kids sorted or you've got to take Annie to dance and you've got to walk the dog and it's just a million things and I'm sure you've got your own stuff. And then on top of that, as we've already gone through this morning, is the news and the weight of the news on us. It's massive. And I, I don't want to go into it too much here, but I wonder if we're wired for that global connection that we now have. Personally, I don't feel like we are. Like, I know myself, I don't have the bandwidth for all of that information. I can't carry all of that. And actually, it's quite damaging to my soul. And I've been feeling that. And the good news is, there is a resource available. It's God's presence. It's available to you today. And I couldn't find it for a long time. I really, really struggled with it. My church upbringing, we... It was quite strict. I wouldn't want to sort of brand it or label it as a particular donation, but it, it, was, it was just quite heavy, and we didn't talk about things of the Spirit or things of the presence of God. So I didn't really have a narrative or script. I didn't really have a picture of how I could access the presence of God. So the river of life has really helped me. It's really helped me kind of visualise, and when I'm praying, part of my prayers and, and spiritual meditation, if you like, is saying, Lord, take me to the river of life. Take me to the, the, the edge of the river of life. Let me in. Let me get into the river of life. Like, saturate me. Be all around me. I, I need you. I need that connection. And, and I've been discovering the presence of God through that. And it's changed things for me massively. It's changed how I see God, how I, how I connect with God. Because so much of my Christian experience felt like a lot of strain, a lot of effort, a lot of outward force and energy and momentum and show up, say the right things, try and be the right person. And it's hard graft to live that consistently without the presence of God, without encountering that river of life. And once I started to find that river of life, 
it, it wasn't a chore, it wasn't hard work, it was a delight to go near God. It was a delight to pray, a delight to set time aside and seek him in the stillness or in the quiet of my life. Those secret places that only you go to with him. And that's kind of where I want to end it. Not right now, I'm just going to share something else, but I want to go full circle and say that if you want to access the river of life, it's so simple. Find time, get alone with Jesus and say, here I am. Here I am. And it takes time. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But Ezekiel, this is a really powerful verse, a set of verses. I'm not going to do loads of theological thoughts around it and Old Testament theology. You can get a Bible dictionary and have a look and it will give you loads more info than I can give you. But what a picture. And I absolutely love that, that Ezekiel had this picture. It, what, it might be helpful, just some context. So at this point, he's had sort of 25 years or so of the nation divided, in exile, hopeless, just wondering what on earth happened? Where did it all go wrong? Just living in division, chaos, hopelessness. And then he gets these plans to rebuild. He gets, this, he gets a few chapters that are really heavy of how it's going to look, measurements, the new place, the new dwelling for the Lord. He gets all this instruction. But then what? And then he gets this amazing picture of this river flowing. And just over a mile, it gets from a trickle to a place that's so wide he can't cross it. The river of life. And, and what's beautiful about it is it says it hits the sea. So it hits the Dead Sea where nothing grows. There is no life. It's like 10 times more salty. I've never been, but looking on YouTube, and it's literally salt around the edge. It's just crusty, nasty, gnarly. There's nothing in there. It doesn't go out anywhere. It's just dead water. But yet in this passage in the Bible, when the, the river of life hits it, it turns it to fresh water. And it brings life. Everywhere the river goes, it brings life. I was at a men's uh, meeting a few months ago in Dartmoor. And uh, where we were meeting, it was beautiful in, in the mountains. And it had like a, a valley going down to the bottom of the property. There was about 30 of us blokes there. And there was a, a stream stroke river. It was quite wide. It was about maybe 12 foot wide. Uh, and at the deepest point, probably about six foot. And it sort of broke over various rocks and went on its way. And all the lads on the Saturday afternoon, they were like, we're going down the pub. So they walked off there, because I don't drink anymore, so the pub don't really interest me. So I was like, I'm going to stay here. And as it happened, I was the only person there. All of a sudden, I was on my own. And I was looking at this water and thinking, I'm going to get in. I'm going to, I'm going to get in. I didn't have any swimming trunks. So it was, sorry for this, but it was an underpants job. But I just thought, you, I might not be here again. I might not be here again. So I've got in. It was the coldest water I've ever experienced in my life. I've been in some cold waters. It, it literally, I, I started to panic. I was like, I better get out because if I get into trouble here, I'm going to drown. Like, there's no one about. But then I managed to steady my breathing. But if you've ever been in cold water, it's the sort of cold we can't think. It's overwhelming. And it overwhelmed me. And I sat there, like, up like this, I just got in. And it was so cold. But I just sat there. And it, it just really connected with me that the whole, what I said at the start, this busyness, the static, the noise. Suddenly, I was in a place where I couldn't think about all that stuff. And this water was just flowing past me. And I had a bit of a God encounter in that water. You know, just sitting in this water, thinking about the river of life, thinking about connecting with God. And it's so, so vital for us as Christians. Why is it vital? Well, I believe, and I'm saying this to Paul, that the, I think the river of life flows to and through us. And that's kind of what I wanted to just say to you. Like, as a, as a congregation, as a collection of Christians that are looking outward and saying, what does it mean to live in Rowhead or around Rowhead or in Colchester? How do, we, how do we show God? How do we live out Christian lives that impact us, but then flow through and impact the communities around us, the people around us? It's the river of life. It's the river of life. And it's about your discovery of it, your personal discovery of the river of life. And it may be that you need to dig some new wells. It may be that you need to dig a new well. 
when we were living in Brazil, we lived on a farm and some guys came to dig a new well for us. It's a fascinating process. They dug it by hand, it took about a week, uh, and they were in teams, there was about four guys, and they take turns drilling the ground by hand with this hand drill, it was re really primal. And as the, the drill bit got a certain depth, they bring out an extension, screw it on, down they go. And they just kept drilling and drilling and drilling, and they took turns, it took time. They finally broke through, but we couldn't drink the water for about a week, two weeks, because whenever it came through the tap, it was just sand. It was really, over time, over time, it started to flow crystal clear. And just an example, just to pray, maybe helpful to you. If you're sitting thinking, well, I'm, I've not experienced this, I've not experienced that presence of God, that, that okay, God, this is you, you're here, I, I can't deny it. Then maybe you need to dig a new well. And maybe for you, that would be just getting some time on your own. Setting aside that time in the morning, in the evening or in the afternoon. Maybe you like to walk and pray and talk to God on your own. But finding that time to just shut yourself away with God and go, here I am. For me, I like to picture the river. I like to imagine it. I like my mind to, to imagine what it would look like, what it would feel like. I think it's one of the most contested spaces for us in this life. As you start to set your attention, your focus, your interest on the presence of God or the river of life, it will be almost like a front line opens up against the enemy. And he will do all he can to stop you from getting there. All he can. And I also like to imagine some of the things he might say. No, 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 don't let Nathan talk to God. Don't let Nathan get close. Because as soon as he does, things change. Don't let him get near the edge of the water because as soon as he sees it, as soon as he dips his foot in, as soon as he gets in that water, his marriage changes. The way he acts changes. The things he looks at on the internet changes. The way he talks to people, they all changes. Don't let him near the water. You can imagine that conversation. The closer you can be to Christ, the closer you can be it is absolute treasure. It is all there is. The river of life, the presence of God is available to you, fully available. The last little picture and I'm going to pray. I used to go in the woods with my car and we did this thing called dam busting. We, we would find parts in a stream or brook that were blocked and we'd smash them out and let the water flow. And then it morphed and then we decided to make our own dams and try and destroy everything. <laughs> So we did that for a little bit, and we used to build these massive rock dams so the water had to go right around the edge. But then part of the enjoyment was breaking it away, getting it out of the way, clearing it through, and going, okay, now the water's flowing again. Simple picture. Maybe for you, part of it is that too. What's standing in the way? What's blocking the way from you experiencing the, the river of life, that, that presence of God in your life? Maybe it's disbelief. You know, and that's totally understandable. And I get that too. I want to encourage you to trust it, to lean into it, step into it with faith and go, God, I can't see how this works. I don't understand this, but I'll trust you. I need the river of life. I need your presence in my life. Or maybe it's words that were spoken over you, things that have latched on, held on. Maybe it's agreements you've made to certain ways of thinking or certain things in your life that are, are limiting, holding you back. Because that river's flowing. That river is flowing and it's fast. It's flowing right now. Maybe it's a strategy that the enemy's had to stop you getting near the edge of that water. I'll share a story with you. It's a silly thing, but I'm a bit embarrassed to share it because it, again, it's down to perception. But I was praying one time in my office and I could, sense this, I could sense and feel and see the river of life in my mind's eye and I'm like, Lord, I'd love to get in. I'd love to get in the river of life. So I went over and got in, in my imagination, sitting in my office, on my own, just praying. I was meditating on, on the Bible. I said, Lord, I want to get in the river of life. And I laid back in my mind's eye and I'm floating in the river. Like I wasn't going anywhere, but it was flowing past me. And I'm just held up by it. And I said, Lord, is it deep? Is the river of life deep? 
And suddenly, it, I felt as if I was falling. And I went so deep, so fast in this moment, it scared the life out of me. And I, I literally ran out of my office. I said to Jen, that was unbelievable. It's, the river of life, God's presence is deeper. It's more than you can ever imagine. But it's gentle, it's calm. It meets you where you are. He, he, he knows you. The Bible says he knows the words that are formed before you even say them. Let's just move into just a bit of a response time. I'm going to read some scripture to us. Let's just pray for a sec, be in a moment of reflection. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I'm making everything new. He also said, Right, because these words are faithful and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will freely give to the thirsty from the spring of the water of life. Are you thirsty today for the presence of God in your life? What does that new well look like? What are some of the obstacles in that stream, that brook, that presence of God in your life? Maybe in your mind's eye, go upstream a little bit. Where did the blockage occur? Where did that stream start to narrow? Have its flow cut off? Was it something in your life? Something you experienced? Something you said, did, received? If you get to that point, just lay it before God. Just turn it over to him. Imagine that river, imagine that stream starting to flow again. Starting to gather momentum as the water flows over those rocks. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, will have streams of living water flow from deep within him. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, would you unlock that stream of living water in us? Lord, by faith we step close. You are good. Your presence is available to us. Saturate us, Lord. Bring us closer to you, to your presence. Lord, we open the door of our hearts to you. Maybe just imagine that door. I do. Imagine that door opening. Where you say, Jesus, come on in. You're welcome here. Let's say the grace for one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.